Welcome to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. Hey, I had a student come in class one time where we were going through our meter and there was a couple of things that he, he didn't see and so uh, there's something out there that we all we call meter hieroglyphics. It's just all of those signs and symbols on our meter that we may or may not understand. Uh, we never want to take for granted that uh, everybody understands or knows what all of the settings on the meter mean or exactly what they do. If you look at the very top, um, you'll see your cat rating or category rating for your meter. It's very small, um, but it's right there. And this one is a category three and it kind of tells you uh, what category this meter falls into. And then on the other side, it, you'll see a 600 volts and a 400 amps. That's gonna tell us the maximum voltage and amperage that that meter can kind of handle. Um, you want to make sure that you have the right category and the right meter for the job or the voltage or the amperage that you'll be dealing with as they all are very different and so you got to make sure you have the right one. When we go down here we'll look and we'll see uh, Hertz AC, uh, Hertz uh, 400 AC, uh, AAC and VAC and so those are going to be our Hertz. Hertz is nothing more than the period of time in which that AC current you know uh, is going back and forth. We would actually use that if we were having like a variable frequency drive, a VFD. Uh, those types of motors we would we would use a setting like that. If we move over we'll see that we have VDC or volts DC used for checking uh, DC voltage and uh, DC amperage if we should be in situations that have that. The next uh, setting is your Hertz Hertz percentage. That's your, your duty cycle. To learn more about that, jump over to the, the Field Piece website for that particular meter, which is the SC660, and it'll give you more information about that. And then after that, then you have what you call the, the UADC, or micro amps DC. This would be used if we were checking like a flame sensor. Um, we could actually hook our meter up in series with that flame sensor and uh, take a reading on our flame sensor to tell uh, whether or not that flame sensor is going to provide a signal for us to send back to the board to let us know that we can continue on with the uh, sequence of operations. Um, there's actually a video that we did a while back, so if you want to go check that out, where we actually tested a flame sensor and put it in series with the meter, you can see how that's done there. This one has an L1, uh, L2, L1, L3 setting. That's gonna be for three phase uh, motors. We can actually find out and hook up our different phases of our motor with this particular meter and find, make sure that our motor is turning in the intended direction that we want it to turn. We've got our Fahrenheit and Celsius for our temperature readings. Um, we can take temperatures in both those, Fahrenheit and also in Celsius. And you'll notice here this uh, RECV. This is gonna be uh, for all of our Bluetooth applications. So if we have apps and different things like that that pair and sync up with this particular meter, you would turn it to that so that we could connect and sync to those applications. The MFD is gonna be our microfarad setting. That's for testing capacitors. Uh, we can test our capacitors, find out where they are in relation to what the manufacturer says they should be at to make sure that they're providing enough um, for those motors that use capacitors to operate at their optimum efficiency. We also have a non-contact voltage deal. That's a very a good one to have for safety. We can switch it to that setting, use our amp clamp there, uh, go by wires to make sure there's no voltage present if we're unsure. Um, and that's gonna help keep us safe from getting shocked. The last one before we get to the off setting actually has three different ones in there. It's got the omega symbol for ohms or resistance. We could ohm out a compressor to find out, you know, what our common start and run windings are. You have a little, it uh, looks like a, a sound thing. It's a little dot with some sound waves on it. Uh, in the industry, sometimes you'll hear people talk about ringing it out. Um, you may use different terminology. When I first started in the field, I, I didn't know what they were talking about when they said ring it out, but they were talking about a continuity test. Uh, be careful, I'll caution you when, when using continuity test on wires, uh, especially if you have a strand of wires that's in one particular jacket, because one strand 
can be connected and have continuity through it. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the other strands do, they could be broken. So uh, just make sure you recognize that when you're checking. And then the last one is for testing diodes and things like that. And then of course, you know, your offsetting. This particular meter has a couple of other settings as well. So it's got an auto range and then it's got a hold for the large M and the small M. The large M would be for a hold for max setting um, and then the small M would be a hold for minimum setting. On the side here, we can also calculate our inrush current. And so uh, we, could, we could get our, our inrush current or our starting amps, if you will, um, <clears throat> on a compressor. Um, and it's got our, our backlighting there, and then of course our select feature. And our select feature is gonna allow us to kind of toggle through, especially uh, if we've got one that's got a couple of different settings in one section. Uh, over here we got our, our diode tester, our continuity tester, and our resistance. That's all in one little uh, section. So we would have to hit select to, to toggle through. We would hit select to, to, tr to switch from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So every meter is not necessarily set up like this. Some have um, more settings than this. Some have fewer settings than this. Um, for instance, your, your microfarad, uh, instead of it being MFD, it may just be um, the capacitor symbol that we would see or sign that we would see on a schematic. Um, but nonetheless, it does the same thing. So uh, the point of the matter is we want to get familiar with the different settings on our meter and with all of those things, what all of those different things mean so that we can use our meter in the most effective manner. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. We'll see you next time. Hey, we absolutely love our HVAC community. We want you to continue to tune in. We want you to continue to, to leave us your, your comments. Uh, make sure you click below to subscribe. We definitely want to hear from you and we'll see you next time.